It's midsummer, a time when the schools of codfish are supposed to be swarming on the inshore grounds. But the fish seem to be scarce out here around Twillingate and New World Island. I asked Ivan Harvey, who fishes out of Merritt's Harbour, how much fish he'd taken aboard. Oh, not very much, sir. Oh, half, half, half. Half. That's about two barrels. A few more of the other one up there, there say. <laughs> we haven't got nothing yet the air only just last couple of days. We've got a barrel, two barrels, three barrels, I guess. Yeah. A lot of fellas down here and Nick got their traps took up. So well, we're not taking them up here yet. You're getting five and six barrels, you know. A few fish on jigger, a couple of barrels here and there on the traps. Not much sign of fish here around Twillingate and New World Island. Not much fish inshore, not much 10 miles offshore either. It seems the boats had to steam for seven or eight hours before they'd strike any amount of fish. Twillingate Island. The original settlers chose to live way out here on this rocky island for one reason to be near the fishing ground. But that was a long time ago. These days, the fish don't seem to come close to shore anymore. The fine old homes of Twillingate stand as mute reminders of more prosperous times. And this place was the capital of our northern fishery. Yes, a lot of fish have been landed over the years here in Twillingate. So what's gone wrong? Too many fishermen, too many gill nets, the trawlers offshore, the winter fishery, the foreigners, or a bit of all these? Whatever the reasons, the small boats of Twillingate haven't landed nearly enough fish to keep the plant workers busy. That's why Oceana Seafoods needed two middle distance vessels last summer. Landings from these vessels, combined with fish shipped in from the north and trucked in from the south, kept the plant going for much of the time. Getting a steady supply of fish is one of the biggest problems facing many inshore plants on the northeast coast. For Gus Etchigary, longtime spokesman for the offshore industry, taking over this inshore Twillingate plant last summer was an opportunity and a challenge. It's not a great year to get into the fishery, but nevertheless, uh, if we can manage to pull through this year, uh, I see some good things for this, uh, for this plant and this area down the road. If, uh, if uh, things that we have in mind come to uh, fruition. The number one priority for us is to uh, do what we have to do to extend the shoulders of the season and get as much raw material as we can into this plant early in the year and later in the year and find the tools to do it with. And uh, that's not easy these days. I suppose with a big plant like this, you've just got to keep it uh, busy all the time. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a big plant. There's uh, close to 450 people employed here. and. Uh, it's, it requires uh, a lot of raw material and it requires it for a lengthy period of time and uh, that's, that's, that's really the key to it. And of course the other thing is to try and improve the quality of the product and uh, improve the, the overall value of, and, the, and, the, and the pack mix as much as possible. Where do you see most of your fish coming from now in the future here? You, I know you're, you're getting some from Labrador, some from the mid-distance fleet, some inshore. I see it coming from Everywhere it's possible to catch a fish on the south east coast of Newfoundland, south coast, the east coast of Newfoundland, and Labrador. So it's going to be a combination of all these things. So the main aim is to keep all those people inside working. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And bring stability and security to uh, this uh, wonderful area of uh, Twillingate and New World Islands, where there's about 7,500 people. I guess having a stable workforce here is one of the one of the prime reasons you came here too, is it? Big. It's, 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 a, it's a major asset because it's, uh, it's an area that, uh, you know, it's been in operation since 1956, uh, in fact, and it has produced a lot of uh, extremely good people uh, on the production line, and it's a question of, uh, of molding uh, the organization in a way that is going to be a successful and an efficient production unit. Bruce Rogers is a young fisherman here in Twillingate and this is the vessel he built last winter. Not a big long liner by any means, 
but one that will help him move a bit further offshore to where the fish are. But how far do you have to go these days? We're 10 miles off now, and there's still not much sign. This is the Denise Ann with John, Howard and Jim Lewis, Jerry Gillard and Terry White. Their nets were empty. It's a nice ways out for a small boat. Not bad on a fine day, but there are times when Broad and Glenn Mitchell and Wendell Daly don't have it as easy as this. But according to skipper Bruce Rogers, the small boats are being forced offshore. There's no fishing shore from. They got to keep moving out for to get anything, you know, for to survive that. And um, there's just nothing inshore at all now? Or, there's or? not a thing inshore now. Well, Bruce, does this mean now that the small boat fellows are getting bigger and bigger boats all the time? Well, um, the whole depends now to the fisherman. Now, if he intends to be at it for a while longer, he's going to have to go bigger. Is that why you got a bigger boat now? You've, yeah. It's your first year, isn't it? Yeah. With a long liner. Yeah. Well, I was fishing now in uh, with long liner with somebody else, you know. Said, but this is your investment in the future. Yeah. You build it yourself the winter. Yeah. Yeah. And how is it working out? Are you doing better than than if you were in a small boat? Do you figure? Doing three times as good as what we do, we're doing in a small boat. Is that the future to, to go further and further offshore? Then? Well, that's the only way you're going to make a living now at fishing. You got to go farther all the time. Another two or three years, you have to something bigger than this. So this will do for a while, but then you'll be... Looking for something bigger. Yeah. Some of the bigger longliners fish way offshore. In fact, seven or eight hours steam from Twillingate. They have to go out for two or three days. And this is the inshore fishery. Some longliners were at sea, some were tied up. And some, such as Don Young's vessel, the Atlantic Star, would soon be headed north to Labrador. Well, Don, I believe the Atlantic Star is headed north, is she? Pretty soon, yeah, pretty soon. As soon as we get our gear down below now. Yeah. Tomorrow, hopefully. Just not enough fish here? Don't seem like it. Northeast, not, not like it used to be. How much are you getting now when you go out? Very little. Four and five thousand pounds a trip. Not, not very much. That's not much for both this size, is no. it? No, not enough, no. A few years ago, you get 10, 12, 15,000 per trip. Now you get four and five, five and six. Do you have to use more gear now these days than you did? Oh, quite a bit more, yeah. We started with 840 nits, and we started in 68. Now we're using 200. For the same amount of fish? Yeah, <laughs> the same amount of fish. Yeah. yeah, a lot of difference. Well, by now, the Mitchells were back in port, cleaning their fish. Rod and his son, Glenn, didn't have much work to do, for they hadn't caught much. For the time and effort, it was scarcely worth it. Is the fishery finished for those in the small open boats? I wondered what Glenn thought of it all. Would you like to have one of those big boats they got us in the Grand Bank or one, something like that? That's what you need, you know. That's the future, so, you know. This here on the shore, this, this, is, this is as good as over now. This is going to be the future. But well, not everybody can get a boat like that. That's right. If everyone has something like that, then no one won't make nothing out of that. <laughs> Too many out there that, right? It's all it. Whichever way you look at it, the Atlantic Ocean is the only industry out here on these rocky islands and headlands. If you're going to stay here, you've got to turn to the sea. There was a small crowd of people, men, women and children, gathered at the Marine Service Center, the Molan family of Musgrave Harbor. They'd come to Twillingate so that they could ride back home on the longliner Morrison and Don had just purchased. Now with this boat, they could chase the fish all the way out to the funks. A big gamble, for the Molan brothers were used to fishing inshore. Well, the inshore fishery year was, was bad for we fellas. And last year we did very good in cat traps, you know, eh? And uh, so they were doing very good at funks. So we had a chance to, you know, to go for, for a bigger boat. 
We had two traps that up in Newtown all summer. We didn't get anything out of that. But no, last year was a good year, wasn't it? Right. We fished them most year last year. Me and my son and two more fellas from Newtown. We did them uh, very well in one trap. We had 135,000 in three weeks. And nothing this year? Nothing whatsoever. We uh, brought one and put it out before the caping season. And after the caping was over, we came back for the straight loop. And the wells that law tore up. New trapping water first time. So you're a bit discouraged with the trap fishery? Yeah, I really am. But only after one year? I mean, couldn't it come back again next year? Oh yeah, we're going to still keep our inch gear, right? So, but we're more just bullied on this now. So, so the idea, I suppose, is to have have a crack at both fisheries, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the idea of it, yeah. And we're getting the first thing with this too, eh? That's a big thing, you know. Is that the way inshore fishermen have got to go now, you figure? Well, that's what it seems like. Yeah, I mean, the big boats, are they're doing really good, eh? In the spring of the year at the Cape and one thing or another. We were at the Cape the, this summer with a, a small seine. We done uh, really good, you know. So, so you figure with a bigger saying you'll do even better. Well, we'll try. <laughs> well, obviously the fishery was down, but it was far from dead. There, on the side of the road, a crowd of men were putting the finishing touches to a shiny, spanking new fiberglass boat. Ready, Bob? They know how to build boats out here in Twillingy. Businessman Gary Guy and foreman Gerald Stockley were proud as punch, and business was booming. Well, Gary, the inshore fishery can't be completely dead. You fellows seem to be busy here making, making boats. We're fairly busy. We've got orders backed up now. They're good for probably around, I guess, October, November. This, you know, we're, we're pretty good. That's not just for here in Twillingate either, is it? No, that's for all over the province. Uh, we have them in uh, Black Tickle, Ramia, uh, all over the province. Gerald, you're pretty proud of these, these boats you're putting out now, I guess. Oh yeah, you know, it's a lot of hard work goes into it and it's uh, designed by a person from 28, so yeah, we're proud of it. Works good, work the ship's good. And on top of that, most, I guess, the long run provides jobs, right now there's nine jobs and 28 from it. And the bottom line is it's jobs and try to make business successful. Now you live here too. Uh, the fishery is pretty poor here, isn't it, for most people this year? Yeah, it hasn't been good. There's a lot of people, there's some people in today talking about, you know, may have to go away, to finish off getting you know, enough to get their stand for the year. And so these boats now are, are for, for next year with, with the hope that there'll be more fish? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way that people buy, buy one year for the next and the people are buying you know, a bigger boat like 23 here because it's a bigger boat. They can travel off the land further and what's known around here is the trench and go out outside and do our fishing, you know. So you're hoping with these boats or the fishermen there that they'll be able to inch further offshore? Well, this, this is basically what they're telling us as they're coming in buying, that they can travel further and, and carry bigger loads as they're coming back, you know. This is Merritt Harbour, a little place on New World Island, not far from Twillingate. There are all sorts of little coves and harbours like this tucked away on the northeast coast, places that have survived for hundreds of years, places where people cling to the fishery through good times and bad. One such person is Ivan Harvey. Sometimes you, you air so much and you get, you're getting discarded, but then you hear talk of some place where, like up around St. John's here, Petty Harbour, they've done very good. You know, well, you say as well, if the fish is good up here, you almost think sometimes they got to come in here, you know. And down on the northeast coast where we are, well, it's a great place for fish. You know, I've only had it now the last 12, 13 years. I've seen it bad enough where you almost take everything out of the water and go on. You know, we had uh, two cod traps in the water one summer, and we made $87, four men each. So that was pretty bad. But in the last couple of years, we've done good. And this year now, we have punished it out and now it seems like the fish is just picking up. So I don't know where the fish is coming in or it was coming in here and stayed there and don't, never moved before now. But uh, a lot of people have never done good. But we're doing very good, you know. The inshore fishery, it's a good life. When the fish come in, you can make a fair amount of money in a short time. Ivan, like many other young Newfoundlanders, has worked away from home. 
in Toronto and other places. For this is the life he loves. But can you make a living anymore fishing close to shore in a small boat? That's the question. Well, this is uh, August month, and, and the trap fish are only taking on now. That's right, Ted. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yes, they were our best day of the summer. We followed that two more. It's fair now, but it was bad the other day, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago. I started a lobster kitchen. I, I done fair, lobster kitchen. And I done, we done fair on Capelin. And we had a couple weeks here. Oh, Cod wow. was slow, but we're getting picking up Get the road, 10 and 12 barrels a day now, so it's not too bad, I guess. We had six barrels this morning, and uh, now this afternoon we might only get one, you know, but that's Cod is a Cod. You know, some people haven't done very good. A lot of people got their traps out of the water. Are you worried about the fish that's out there, though? Is there enough fish for everybody, you think? Uh, well, if, if they handled this a few years ago, you know, we're going to have to suffer down the road for a few years for to keep these, get these stock back up. That's my thought about it, you know. If, if I'm going to say, well, I'm going to stay in the fishery, I might have to suffer for a few years, right, for to get these stocks back up. So in other words, or I'm going to have to leave, you know. And if I get said the fishery, I got to leave Newfoundland because my education is not high enough to get nothing else in Newfoundland. You know. And this is the life you want to lead too. And this is the life I want to live. You know. So. Yeah. It must. Uh, it must uh, be terrible to see so many young people leave a place like this. You know, it's funny, boy. Yes, because if the young people don't stay in small communities, the community is going to be gone. You know. And so, from hundreds of coves all along the coast of Newfoundland, fishermen continue to move out to the traditional fishing grounds along shore. Ever hopeful the fish will return, and wondering sometimes what legacy they will leave for tomorrow's generation of inshore fishermen. The fish landed last year by the middle distance vessels was important to the Twillingate plant. It helped take up the slack created by the disastrous inshore landings, which were down 40% from the previous year. This year there'll be no middle distance fish. The boats are up for sale. And there'll be no offshore fish either for plants like Twillingate, for the resource short plant program has been discontinued. For Oceana Seafoods and other inshore plants already operating way under capacity, the recent cutbacks are bad news. They've got to sink or swim on whatever fish they can scrape from the inshore grounds. Gus Echegary. Unfortunately, what's happened, and I'm not sure people really understand this, but uh, effectively what's happened is the northeast coast of Newfoundland has lost 43 million pounds of fish. And that, uh, the impact of that in an area that has, was already in deep trouble, uh, in my view, it will be devastating in 1990. Do you mean to say a place like Twillingate with seven or 8,000 people and hundreds of inshore boats just can't provide you with enough fish to keep going? Uh, as unbelievable as that sounds, that is a fact of life. And that not only applied in Twillingate, but to Fogo and uh, to uh, other uh, processing plants in that area. I mean, that area between uh, Cape Friels and, uh, and uh, Cape John particularly was, was hit uh, hard in 1989. Now many other places along the northeast coast were hit as well, but that particular area was down enormously. So you really have to depend on fish coming in from Labrador and from further offshore, from the, from the trawlers even too at times. Absolutely no question whatever. The northern cod it's caught inshore by small boats and offshore in the wintertime by the trawlers. The brakes have now been applied to this offshore fishery. The recent announcement of quota reductions sounded the death knell for some south coast communities. The northern bonanza is over. We've been catching too much fish. Plants must close. Trawlers must tie up. 
bitter medicine. Yet cutbacks had to come, admits Gus Echegary, who helped pioneer this offshore fishery. Look, I've been associated with this offshore fishery for a long, long time. And, you know, we were responsible for bringing the first stern trawler to Canada in 1962. And ever since that arrival, the technology that has been applied in the offshore fishery has changed remarkably from year to year. Now, 1962 is not a long time ago, considering the fact that this fishery has been going on for 500 years. But believe me, the increasing pressure of newer and better technology in the last 20 years is the root cause of the problem we have today because that enormous increase in fishing pressure as a result of technology in the form of newer, bigger vessels, better propulsion, better design of a tool to harvest a resource. All of that took place without sufficient knowledge of the resource itself. And we're all part of this. I mean, you can blame the scientists and all the rest, but the fact of the matter is that all of us who've been involved in the development of fisheries in the last 25 years failed to recognize the enormous impact of this technology, this developing technology had. When we were operating a 125-foot side trawler out of Galtas or Grand Bank or Harbor Breton in the Gulf of St. Lawrence catching redfish, we were catching a reasonable quantity of fish, keeping plants moving, and there were efficient, reasonably efficient operations. Then suddenly someone got the idea that you had to triple that. So midwater trawls were introduced and the catch went up from 200,000 pounds for eight days to 600,000 pounds for eight days. The result? The resource just went down. And today you have galtas, and you have, harbor, or you have the other plants that depended on redfish. The same thing applied on the northern cod stock. Isn't it ironic now, though, that despite all this, we still need these offshore boats in order to keep the inshore plants going? Well, that's a result, and only a result, of the enormous offshore pressures, particularly on the spawning stock, that has caused the, the, uh, the non-migration of fish shoreward. I mean, there's no other alternative, in the short term at least, uh, but to try and get some piece of the action offshore. But I mean, that doesn't say that the offshore quotas should exceed what the scientific community is recommending. I mean, this business of having it at a, at a level that is going to maintain the population is pretty risky stuff. I mean, there's a whole bunch of environmental conditions and factors that can occur here that could uh, lower that biomass fairly quickly for reasons that we won't learn in this community until perhaps the year 2050. So how does 1990 look to you right now? Are you still hopeful that things Well, we're hopeful around? that Twilly Gate will be operating just as everybody else, I guess, in the inshore fishery. But at the same time, I have to say to you that we're looking at other ideas that will uh, keep the operation going in a, um, in a, in a viable fashion um, uh, and, and, um, and diversified, I guess is the word to use. We're looking at diversification in that area uh, in order to um, uh, maintain a, a viable operation. At the same time, uh, provide uh, uh, employment opportunities for 475 people and, uh, and service 875 fishermen. And I hope to hell we're successful.